you got a whole lot of movement and a whole lot of heat. In this episode, we're all about jet power. When you do hit the accelerator pedal, you better be holding on because this thing is going to take off. We've got rocket-powered retro rebuilds. The buggy is not designed to take a jet engine. It's a bit like riding on top of a firework. A tiny car with a big engine. A one-of-a-kind turbine. It's scary fast. We'll put a smile on your face every time. And a real record break. We smashed the 100 mile an hour in a homemade jet powered go kart. So buckle up. I'll be holding on for dear life. Because these five fire breathing, fuel hungry rides. Jet power is great fun. Are ready to blast off. First, a vintage VW bus. Maybe your hippie uncle took one to Woodstock, man. It's a pretty rare, iconic vehicle. It's been restored to the highest of standards. But man, your uncle's ride never smoked like this. This badass bus breathes fire. This is my vehicle, Oklahoma Willie. This split windshield VW was originally registered in Oklahoma. Thanks to Perry, it now has two engines. A standard two liter in the rear keeps it nicely road legal, and a jet engine allows Oklahoma Willie to put on a performance down at the drag strip. I'm a bit of a show off, I suppose. I, I, I don't like to do something that somebody has already done. So we sit in the pub. We all get drunk, we come up with a stupid idea, and whoever comes up with the stupidest idea, I'll go away and lock myself in the garage for five years and build it. Perry's been building his own rides for 40 years, but this rad machine is his crowning glory. To build Oklahoma Willie, I first of all bought the jet engine, stripped that down and rebuilt it, chromed everything in polished aluminium. Then following that, I bought the VW bus, to put it on. Incredibly, this bus is armed with an engine that started life powering a warplane. This here is a Rolls-Royce Viper 535. It was made in Bedford in 1978, and it was originally in a BAC Strike Master, which is a single engine fighter jet. Getting a 130 pound jet turbine on this little bus required some inspired design. There's a maintenance tray here, so you see the entire thing pulls out. And there you can see, well, the computer and all of the controls that keep the jet running and keep it safe. Looking inside the cab. So first impressions when you get in the vehicle is quite what you'd expect to see in a 1958 Volkswagen. Normal steering wheel, gear lever, handbrake, ignition, speedometer, clutch, brake, accelerator on the floor. However, I have added a jet, so we have some more controls. So here we have the main controls for the jet, and here we have all the monitoring gauges and, and starting buttons. Man, that's one racy rocket, but is it safe? Down here, there's what we call a dead man's pedal. I must put my foot on that first of all. If during the jet performance anything goes wrong at all, I just release that and everything is closed down, the computer closes everything down, and it cannot be restarted. Driving a jet engine means rewriting the rules of acceleration. So I cover the first eighth mile in about eight, 8.5 seconds, and the second eighth mile I do in about two and a half seconds. So it's getting quick really, really fast. It's a bit like riding on top of a firework, the, the sensation. There's no vibrations. Ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime. Before a race, you can get a little bit nervous. There's an awful amount of power that you're unleashing in one go. 
you're just focusing on the horizon at a point and making sure you stay dead straight. Jet power is great fun. It's just such an awesome power. For the noise, the smell and the sound, it's one of the most incredible things that you can ever experience. From off the chart to super smart. Super-powered rides come in all shapes and sizes. 2008 smart car powered by a three-cylinder, 60-horsepower engine. But this little car is far from stock. This is the world's fastest smart car. Bill proudly claims to have the speediest smart car on the planet. Capable of smashing out the quarter mile in nine seconds, this little monster is no slouch. Guzzling through an incredible 15 gallons of fuel every five minutes, it ain't exactly economical. But then, its second engine did come from a military helicopter. And it's a lot smaller than a Huey. But when it's not busting out fireballs, Bill can still take this tiny trickster out for a Mosley. Is it legal to have a jet engine in a vehicle? Well, I hadn't got pulled over yet. However, you're sitting literally shotgun next to a 2,000 horsepower fire breathing after burning turbojet. You got a whole lot of movement and a whole lot of heat. It does get hot. It has a factory AC in it. It does have a full function afterburner, so it'll do 170 miles per hour in about nine seconds on a, on a racetrack. It'll do 300, but probably one time. There's just no way to stop it without parachutes. We travel the world, but there's no place like home. And uh, Colorado has a lot to offer. It just makes perfect backdrop to have a good time and fire up the smart car. Let's face it, if you've got a jet-powered smart car, you're going to take every chance to show it off. This is the Telluride Festival of Cars and Colors. It's an automotive, aviation, and motorcycle event, and it's in its fourth year. Having the rocket car here is one of the greatest things I could ever imagine for this event in such an infancy because you don't get these kind of cars at local car shows. Jet engine, smart car, perfect fusion of aviation and automotive technologies. It ties in a show like this. Pretty fortunate, you know, people dig what we do. Brother man, I dig it too. Thank you. From Jet Smart to Jet Cart. <laughs> Nottingham, England, once home to Robin Hood, and now home to an outlaw of the track. Because while this looks like another yard built cart, there is one crucial difference. making it the world's fastest go-kart. I've just always had an interest in jet engines. My grandfather was an engineer, my dad was an engineer. I've been playing with engines since I remember. Seeing it make a vehicle move, that to me is the enjoyment of building the jet engine. I think the first one we were lucky it moved. I was amazed when it did move, and I was even more amazed when we did 30 mile an hour in it. But that was just the start. Tom was the pilot. I'd built the, the jet engine. And on September 5th, 2017, Andy and his friend Tom Bagnell would push themselves to the next level. We've set Guinness World Record of 112 mile an hour. That was the goal, always has been the goal. For me, it was wonderful. 10 years of work, proving that we could do it. In front of Guinness judges, Andy's homemade jet go-kart recorded an official speed of 112.29 miles an hour, rocketing it into the record books. And that's not all. Days later, 
they took it to an incredible 116. There's no slowing down for this dedicated speed demon. And he's working on a new cart and plans on smashing his own record. It's lighter, the engine is more powerful. This is a faster one, meaner one, bigger engine. It's probably a third bigger, but we're hoping to go faster. Well, I'm hoping to go faster. I'm hoping for 140 mile an hour, if not more. <laughs> Homemade jet powered go kart. I've got the battery. Underneath the battery is the electrical box. There's a series of relays in there. Got a dashboard, fuel tank at full power. It burns four or five litres of fuel a minute. The afterburner will get through 10 litres in no time. That is one thirsty ride. Two main fuel pumps again, one for the engine, one for the afterburner. Main inline fuel filter, fuel line into the engine. And then we've got this big beastie at the back, which is the reheat or the afterburner. Add more fuel, ignite it, increases the volume, you get greater velocity gases coming out the back of the engine. This baby is lit, but Andy's got a few more months of testing to do before this car will be ready for a run at his own record, hopefully smashing it and hitting that new goal of 140 miles an hour. Wait for some better weather next year and get it to the track. If you're going to make a supersonic cart in suburbia, you're going to need a patient partner. It was loud. I had to wear my ear defenders. I could even smell the kerosene in the house. And the window walked in the kitchen again. <laughs> to build the thing yourself, put your thought in it, design it from the ground up, think out the control system, work out the fuel system. Just the journey, to me, that's it. Don't buy it, build it. From Rocket Record Breaker to Buggy Blast Off. Now, I love vintage rides, but some folks, well, they take it one step further. They're having a big rock and racing event here, so we showed up and kind of crashed their party, and it seems to be a hit so far. The nostalgic race weekend, what's more nostalgic than an Amish buggy? Yeah, we go way back. <laughs> This is a Thunder Buggy. People thought we were absolutely nuts, and they're still scratching their heads. When it was designed in the 1800s, this ride had a top speed of just eight miles an hour and one horsepower, one actual horse. Because wooden trailers like this were built to be pulled across the trails, not raced around the track. Enter Mike and Chad, who spent nearly two years on this crazy conversion. But how did this badass buggy come to fruition? Mike and I were at our local county fair watching a truck and tractor pull. I mentioned to him that it would be a really cool idea to build a turbine-powered four-wheel drive pulling truck. I went home that night and found an engine online, bought it. Uh, didn't realize it was not turbo shaft, it was turbo jet only. So I had to come up with a different concept than a pulling truck. It was a lightweight vehicle. We live in the Amish capital of the world, so. He called me up and said, we're not doing a pulling truck anymore, we're doing an Amish buggy. Seemed natural. <laughs> Rigging a huge jet to a tiny trailer was no easy task. The buggy was not designed to take 100 feet of electrical wiring and fuel tanks and a uh, jet engine. It's a really simple engine design. It's a pretty awesome engineering for back in, in the 40s. We built a steel subframe to carry the extra weight. That's about the only thing that we did chassis-wise to uh, strengthen the, the buggy other than airbags. We got a mix of uh, aircraft gauges and car gauges. This red handles for emergency fuel shutoff in the event of an accident. Top, Top speed so far has been 55 to 60 miles an hour. What it lacks in speed, it makes up for in charm. This particular setup, that's probably max because you know, we kept the buggy as original as possible. There's no safety cage. There's 
you know, I've got a driver's seat, seat belts, but it's still a, a wood vehicle. Time for Mike and Chad to hit the track and show this Ohio crowd just what their Thunder Buggy can do. I'll be doing all the crew chief work, making sure he's safe, uh, making sure there's no fuel leaks, all the electrical, towing the vehicle up the starting line. Uh, I'll be holding on for dear life. The worst thing that could happen is I have a fuel leak and the engine runs away or a wheel explodes going down the track. Yeah, that would be a bad day. Buggy wheels aren't speed rated. It's fun to come to the track and or an air show and you know see the reactions of people when they drive by it, you know, they almost break the neck and like, is that really real? We've had mechanical engineers and people come up and you know it's kind of nice when you're sitting in your garage thinking about building things and you actually have an engineer come up and go, okay, you did that all right. You didn't you weren't completed yet. Right. We made it. People thought we were nuts, and I think that was maybe might have been part of the motivation behind of it to, to get we'll this thing you. done. Yeah. Yeah, hold my beer moment and watch this. <laughs> Praise be for the ultimate Thunderbug. From a rocket relic to a jet Corvette. <laughs> and now a Corvette like no other customized by American Racing Royalty and sporting a very special engine. This is the Jet Vet. This car differs from other Corvettes of this era because it has a turbine engine in it. This one, instead of using thrust, actually uses a shaft that turns the drive shaft through the transmission just like a normal car would but it is still a true jet engine. It's absolutely stunning. Released on the 25th anniversary of this all-American classic, a silver 1978 Chevy Corvette is already a pretty special ride. But this bad boy is truly unique because it can do zero to 60 in under three seconds. Incredibly, this modified muscle is still street legal. Because it differs so much from a normal V8 engine, as you can see, the length, the engine extends all the way from the very front of the car, where the radiator normally would be, all the way into the firewall. This engine acts like a giant fan. Under these decorative covers would be the exhaust side of the turbine engine. This series of fins that looks like a radiator is actually the condenser for the air conditioning. And this car actually has functioning air conditioning. The biggest problem with this car is trying to vent the hot exhaust gases. A turbine engine will produce enormous temperatures. We're talking over 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This is so unique. It has a very remarkable exhaust system that was very well engineered. So they built this massive, flat exhaust system. It's all made out of a material called Inconel, which is similar to stainless steel in many ways, but it has a much higher operating temperature and it dissipates heat a lot better. So it enters right here, it comes around and then bridges back together and it fans out and then out of the diffuser. And there is nothing else that's ever been built this way. This radical ride was created 40 years ago by Vince Granatelli, son of Indy 500 guru Andy, just to prove he could. It's now the pride of the Rock and Roll Car Museum in Austin. When you have something that's so unique like this, it really stands out. You can have a lot of Porsches or a lot of Ferraris. A turbine-powered trooper does not come cheap. This car approximately cost $550,000 in 2005. If I was to guess its value today and what it would cost to build this, you could spend six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. To 
drive this car, it's not easy. You have to put a little work in. And there's actually a fifth brake that is installed in order to help slow this car down. You can start out by holding the brake very firmly. Some people maybe would have to use actually two feet. The car will idle between 70 and 90 miles an hour, depending on conditions and the road you're on. When you do hit the accelerator pedal, you better be holding on, because this thing is going to take off. It's going to snap your neck. This is truly one of history's most incredible streetcars. This car accelerates so smoothly and so quickly that before you know it, you're surpassing 130 miles an hour. You have to be very careful when you're driving it because it just really wants to stretch its legs and run. Awe-inspiring, just a marvel of engineering. This car is an ultimate ride because of the sheer rawness of it, the excitement, and the acceleration. It's scary fast. It will put a smile on your face every time. Well, that insane collection of rides might be bad for the environment, and they're loud enough to scare the spots off a leopard. But man, they are cool. We'll see you next time on Ultimate Rides.